someone to scroll. What's up you guys, it's Violet Taylor here and welcome back to Let's Catch a Vibe. Now I hope I'm feeling great, feeling amazing, feeling vibey. As you guys can see, this is my season, sorry, episode 6 review of Secret Invasion. This is the finale, ladies and gentlemen. So, jumping straight in to the end of last episode. The first scene after the recap, um, pretty much the credits, uh, the end, um, the start titles, we pretty much get a conversation between Nick Fury and his wife, because obviously these like, haven't spoke to each other since the last episode where Gaia and Nick Fury's wife had to have a um, battle for pretty much their house. Um, again, we do get a conversation between Nick and his wife, pretty much saying that, you know, I may not come back from this, you know, pretty much. So then we move on to a scene where we see um, Nick Fury go to the Russian compound, pretty much to go head to head with Gravik. We then cut to the opening titles. Again, if I'm looking over this way, I am referencing the episode. We then get um, a scene with um, Colonel Rhodes, or I'm going to call him Scroll Rhodes. He's pretty much talking to the president saying, listen, are you going to finalize this attack or what? Because we've got 10 dead Russians on a, on, on a road, right? That they attacked your convoy, what are you going to do? Now, I liked this part because there is somebody that does speak up and says, listen, how do we know it was the Russians? Can we really be sure? And I like the fact that they don't make some... Because we all, we all know certain, um, certain military officers are just stupid. They just follow whatever the president tells them to do and they don't question it. In my opinion, you can't do that, like... You know, you could be murdering a village full of children. Oh, they say they're terrorists, but they're children. You know what I mean? So, I like the fact that somebody actually spoke up against Colonel Rhodes in this, or Scroll Rhodes. So, yeah, we pretty much get a conversation between that. We then get a phone call of um, Sonia pretty much saying that, um, yeah, um, Fury's coming for the president. you got to move him. Obviously, Colonel Rhodes doesn't know who this Sonia is. He says, who's this? And she says, listen, the president needs moving. We then transition to um, Nick Fury actually going to the Russian compound and actually going to see um, Gravik to pretty much go head to head with him. Um, transitioning from that, we do get um, a lengthy scene of pretty much Nick Fury talking to Gravik. Um, it does switch between there and the hospital. So again, we get pretty much Gravik have a conversation with Nick Fury. Nick Nick is suffering from the radiation there because obviously scrolls that's why they hid in the um they hid in like a um a nuclear power plant that's been shut down because they can take the radiation scrolls can obviously humans can't so we have to take like tablets and stuff um and then we then we do get a converse we do get a bit of a transition where um Colonel Rhodes or Scroll Rhodes is moving the president. People are getting taken out. Obviously, we know that it's Nick Fury, or we find out that it's Nick Fury. The real Nick Fury. So we then transition to a lengthy conversation between Gravik and Nick Fury. Obviously, Gravik's like, this is your fault. If you'd have kept your promise, none of this would have happened. I believed in you. I trusted you. I, I followed you blindly. It was me that was going around and my wet work team pretty much going around. Because obviously, if you guys don't know what the harvest is, any battles that the Avengers have had or anything like that villains-wise... Obviously, um, you know, like damage control that we found out what um, the Vulture was doing in the MCU. Pretty much something like that. But anytime Carol Danvers got cut, the Hulk got cut, Thanos got cut, anything like that. Um, Fury sent in Gravik and his team years ago to go and get like blood samples and stuff like that. Whether it was experimental purposes or whether it was trying to clone powers and stuff like that. But pretty much we do get a scene between Gravik and um, Nick Fury. Nick Fury says, listen, I'm going to give you what you want. I'm going to give you the harvest. Here it is. Um, again, we do transition between the hospital where um, Scroll Rhodes is moving the president around. Um, yeah, we do get a... Um, we do get a scene on a monitor where Gravik puts the harvest into a machine. It flashes up loads of names, call Obsidian, Thanos, Carol Danvers, pretty much anyone you can think of that's been an Avenger. So pretty much we then meet up with Sonya and she's at the hospital with Squirrel Rhodes. Um, and she pretty much says to um, him like, listen, you're not, you're not checking behind doors. Come on, that's clearly a scroll. 
We then move into um, Gravik turning on the machine, where we see Nick Fury is actually Gaia in disguise. So now she has the powers, as well as the extremic, uh, extremist um, formula that she had. Gravik has the powers now. So we get a really, really good CGI lengthy fight scene of them fighting. I actually like the CGI. I couldn't really find a problem with it during this fight. We see Gravik that gets um, Thanos' chin. He gets Thanos' arm. With they, they do both have Carol Danvers' powers, which leads me to think, what are they going to do with Gaia's character after this? Because we, the Avengers we know have disbanded. Like, there's, there's not an Avengers team at the moment, especially after Infinity War. I mean, uh, Endgame. There's no Avengers team anymore. So, moving this on, um, long story short, we do get Gaia that does kill Gravik. So, Gravik's dead now. So, what they're going to do with his body, we don't know. We then catch up with um, Nick Fury appearing at the hospital and saying, listen... Mr. President, that is not Colonel Rhodes. That is a scroll. I know for a fact that is a scroll. So then we lead into um, Sonya having, um, obviously, having Colonel Rhodes or Squirrel Rhodes at gunpoint. Um, Nick Fury is telling him, listen, you need to get rid of this guy. You need to phone in, cancel that missile strike, or you are going to kill innocent people. So then we get to a point where we have... Um, Bear with me a second. Yeah, we get to a point where obviously Gaia's killed Gravik. She goes underneath the power plant and she releases the original um, Colonel Rhodes. She releases all these people, so then they end up escaping and going back to their job. I can't remember. What, I can't remember what the agent's name was from Black Panther, the white guy. I can't remember what his name was. Oh, it's annoying me. I can't remember what his name was. But anyway, he gets released as well. I didn't know he was locked up as well. Well, we did because we knew he was a scroll from the beginning of the episode. And then, yeah, we pretty much transition to the end of the episode where we get the president make a statement, which ends up having a snowball effect because the people that were taken over by scrolls and that have now been released into the real world, they're getting killed. So we have the prime minister that we know was a scroll. We had the um, the guy from the TV station, which was a member of the council that was a scroll. He gets killed on live television. So the president has done bad, more than good, actually saying nationwide that we know the scrolls are out there. We will find you and we will kill you. So that has a bit of a snowball effect. We then transition to Nick uh, meeting back up with his wife. And he's like, listen, I've got to get out of here. You know where I am if you want to find me. Obviously, Nick's going back up to the, set, the, um, the Sabre base. We do get a bit of a scene where we do get um, Sonia catch up to Gaia. And she says, listen, I need your help protecting this, 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 this Earth. You're going to use me. I'm going to use you. And pretty much, yeah, we're going to work together. There's not going to be any friendship involved. We're just going to use each other and get the job done. So moving us on to the end of the episode, we do actually find out that there was a lot of people... A lot of people in an underground base that were actually um, taken over by the scrolls. So there's more than we thought of. Transitioning to the end of the episode where we see Nick Fury is about to go back up into the Sabre. And pretty much he has his wife chase after him and says, listen, did you love me for who I was? And he says, listen, I loved you for all that you were. So we get his wife descale from her scroll form. And then that's it. They pretty much go up to the Sabre base and that's it. End of Secret Invasion. Now, I have been an advocate. I have loved this. I love the espionage. I love the like craftiness of it, the sneakiness of it. Yeah, there wasn't no big superhero battles, except for probably um, seeing Gravik with some of like Groot's abilities, called Obsidian's abilities. Obviously, we got the big CGI fight in this one. But I liked this. Obviously, not a lot of people have spoke about Secret Invasion because obviously the writer's strike and stuff like that going at the moment. So actors can't do red carpets and can't really talk about and promote the episodes and stuff like that. But anyway, I'm going to leave this video here, guys. If you guys like this video, don't forget to smash the like button. If you didn't enjoy the video, let me know in the comments down below why you didn't like the video. Also, let me know, have you guys enjoyed Secret Invasion? Have you not watched it? Are you guys going to watch it? Please let me know in the comments down below. But anyway, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new and join to Let's Catch a Vibe. Also, if you are new, please don't forget to switch on the bell notifications to get no notifications out loud. But more importantly, don't forget to stay vibey. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Cheers.